mm. because they might have had an out-of-body experience as a child. Mm. Mm. So their, their, their ability and their consciousness is already a bit expanded. Mm. She's saying basically they're, they're speculating as to why it only why 20% can recall the experience and the others can't, but I would assume it's all these things, older souls, um, previous previous experiences that might have tipped them uh, into a more um, evolved or expanded uh, consciousness, all sorts of things. But, mm. um, but, but it's all, it's, it's all these people who I think then wholeheartedly know that there's more to you than just your body. Mm. So, you know, I think that that is one of the biggest things that takes place after someone has one of these life-altering experiences is that they, uh, they, they see a bit more of the bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I went to this group called Open Minds and um, uh, there was a number of people who came and it was a pure synchronicity. There was a guy there who'd been struck by lightning two times. Oh, well, I've seen him. Not this guy. He doesn't go around telling like, those are people. No, I won't mention his name, but he hasn't written a book. Are you t- talking about Daniel Brinkley? I saw him in, in California at a um, Mind Body Spirit show. Yeah, no, he likes Daniel Brinkley. He was in a car, so he was okay, but uh, he got struck by lightning twice in a car. Uh, and his best friend, and he was a builder, and um, you know he was always interested in spiritual things. And when he was building his house, there was an electrician who came along, and it just happened happened to be that you know this guy was spiritual and didn't talk about anything as well. And this electrician had had an out of body experience, and uh, that put him on the path to seeking and and finding things as well. Where did you go to this open mind? To? Oh, that, that's only locally. This lady who's seventy two, and I met her doing EFT, and she pulls people in from all over the place, sort of like. And she's like a, she's like a, an energy beacon. So people just phone her up, and she finds people, and uh, uh, she's lovely. She, she's interesting. She's fascinating as well, and and has lived a pretty full life. I also met somebody else musical, and there was a guy who was a a drummer, and he'd got quite a number of issues going on still. And he, uh, but he'd had this near death experience. Uh, he had a heart attack, and he's only in his forties or something like that. But he said it was like. A million megaton love bomb going off. (laughs) And he said, if you feel that the love that you feel for your partner or when you've fallen in love, he said, you can just times that by, I think probably said a thousand. Um, He said, it's something that you've, you know, never really experienced before. And I think that's real, pure, unconditional love. Um, and I think we've all got the ability to to tap into that and, and to, to have it. And the hypnotherapist friend, she'd had a near-death experience as well. And she said she just felt a, a sense of peace she's never been able to experience again. That's uh, he, just wondering, what, I, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to, I'm trying to develop too is some, um, I guess some strong, not necessarily proof, but anecdotal stuff of people who went from knowing and believing that the opposite and then having this transition that just was undeniable. And yours is like, you know, you went from, from believing but to now really, really profoundly believing and having this contact with the spiritual being in your in your meadow, which is fantastic. That's beautiful. Mm. Mm. And then, you know, then there's the others that have no, like, foundation for that either and then they have these experiences. Mm. The the guy who had the near death experience who talked about the million megaton love bomb um, he was still suffering from chronic anxiety and was still in chaos. Uh, we lost contact. Lovely guy, but we were obviously meant to meet for a short amount of time. Yeah, just to deliver some messages to each other, I suppose. Yeah. Then the the guy who had the out of body experience and floated up. He had popped out the back of his head. Uh, when he was lying on the sofa and a number of people said, oh, were you smoking something or were you, were you, uh, you know, were you just daydreaming? And he said, no, 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 no. He found himself in the corner of the room and he remembers going, I'm really losing my hair, aren't I? And he, <laughs> and, but he said he saw it so clearer than he would see in his own sight. So it was not restricted vision at all. It was kind of really conscious, so uh, really aware. That made him more spiritually aware. I don't know anybody who's been agnostic and then sort of said something. But from from the research that I've done, there are th- th- this is also interesting because there are people who have uh, NDEs and they're not they're not um, pleasurable. They're not good. Yes, I've, heard, I've just recently found that out. I'm, that's just terrible. Yeah, and w- we actually talked about that in Open Minds one evening of why that should happen. What was what was the take on that? If people believed in hell or believed that they were going to go to hell. 
uh, and they'd done terrible things either in past lives or that this life or they really didn't believe or, or they did they were agnostic and they believed in a hell or something um, certainly what I understand is that you know if you're very Christian you believe in the Virgin Mary you're Catholic you will probably see the Virgin Mary if you are a Buddhist you will probably see the Buddha I think there's even history of Native American Indians and Aborigines and tribes seeing whatever they believe, you know, when they've had their experience. Oh, okay. I, I think that there's an element of that of what you believe is going to happen to you. What I, I was wondering is when somebody has one of these distressing ones where they see terrible things, what would happen if they actually died? I think that you'd just get released from it. I think all beliefs and everything ends at that point, and it, it's... Transition part. Yeah, it's a transition it is it is a spiritual experience it might be a very negative spiritual experience but such as every experience that we actually have on earth is a spiritual experience just in human form it's the judging of negative and positive isn't it doesn't it make you think that there is like a negative and a positive when you hear about that no because i don't think there's a negative or a positive i think it just all is it's all it's just all experiences. Of course, I could label, I could, you know, if I, I would be able to go, it wasn't a good experience or it was a bad experience. But ultimately, there's always a win-win situation going on. And there's always something. I mean, for example, I had regression and I was a baby and I was born and I, and I died. I, I was only alive for a very, very much short time. And then I was also killed for being a healer. And, and I went back and I was in the lake and I, I'd done something with a baby. And I think it was a woman who's pregnant and I hadn't, whatever I'd done, hadn't, you know, I think mother and baby had died. So I was thrown into the lake. And, uh, you know, whether it's real or not real, it felt real. It really felt like I was drowning. That was some of the work, some of the, the fears of I had to work on in order to move forward with the work that I'm doing now in healing. There is no real good and there is no real bad. There well, is I even, agree th with you there. I, 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 um, I do some channeling now since I had my experience and they've told me the same thing. Mm. There's ultimately no good or bad or right or wrong or right. sin or evil. Uh, it just all is your actions and your experiences are there to either evolve you or not evolve you so that negative nde has to somehow karmically or i, I can't even describe on, on whatever level has to be there to evolve that person yeah. they, they have to, to their benefit. well i think even someone said at the group that, that that they were religious and they went and had a um and had a negative one but if that religion let's say i don't even was if it was catholicism but it's there's a chance that it was but if it's very heavily laden with sin of evil of punishment yes. then that's going to be a belief system that you know you can create the whole nde experience is something that really fascinates me i'm not totally going to say well you know look, as the brain is shutting down you're going to have a trippy experience you're more than likely you know you've got those neurons and the the um, the body is also pumping in probably uh, i think it's it's massive amounts of endorphins and um, morphine and you go into that place but it's the experiences that the majority of people get which are positive ones that irrevocably change their life forever and they go back living with much more purpose and if humanity was to live in that way, to be more responsible for their actions, to bring more light to the earth, to be coming from more of a place of love and unconditional love rather than fear, you would be talking about heaven on earth or a certainly a radically different experience that we are currently having. I believe that that is to come. And I knew that when I was younger, when I was a child. I wasn't aware of the, the Mayan calendar and I wasn't aware of 2012 or, uh, or the, the age of Aquarius. I, I didn't know that. I, I, I didn't know it intellectually, but I had an inner knowing. I, I, you know, the whole thing is absolutely fascinating. It is, isn't it? It's good. It's, um, there's, there's so much to, to try and fathom and understand about it and then to also just um, uh, be able to be open to it and, and this whole open mind group is seeing that's the whole thing I'm interested in is to be able to um, continue to gather more information and then decide what fits within my own um, not belief so much as um, experience and, and 
desires and all that stuff. So it's just mm. fascinating. Mm. Just to wonder, you wonder why the whole thing of fear is so strong down here. That, that's, uh, that's one thing that is, is just not distressing me, but it's something I wonder about is why the elements of fear it's such a big deal in the physical world. Well, fear is just a resistance. It's deliberately there. It's purposefully there. It's for survival. It's for that for our survival, but it's also there for our growth. I can use this metaphor as well. It's like it's like going to the gym uh, and going, well, I don't want to lift any weights, but I want to get fit, <laughs> but I don't want any resistance. You, it has to be there, and sometimes it's it's you know you go in and you think, well, I'm never ever going to be able to lift that. And you never start lifting the really big weights, you know. It depends what your goal is or it depends what you feel your purpose is. But you just do what you need to do and you would do it slowly. Which is where coaching and, and everything else becomes um, probably more important. I mean, I had four years of counselling and, I mean, didn't even touch on the fear. It was sort of all very intellectual. Uh, I never got into dealing with any kind of emotion and um it was, uh, I mean, really, that's how I, when I got really depressed uh, and thought, well, I'm out of here, really, was because my counsellor was saying, well, I can't help you anymore. And oh. that's it. So I felt it was it was an abandonment of uh, lots of other things. It wasn't her fault. I mean, she was you know, she was exactly where she needed to be, and so was I. And if I had gone home, um, that would have been okay as well. I understand what you mean. Uh, the, with all of the fear that goes, because you can just have turn on the television or the uh, internet or, you know, you, it's, it's to be careful. I, I love one of the things that it says, um, be informed, but don't be inundated by what's going on in the world. Yeah. So uh, as much as you can, getting in contact with nature and I don't lead a life that really is in the consciousness that a lot of people are in. Yeah, no, I don't either. I'm very limited on my television as far as me. And individuals who are likely to affect you and bring you down and bring your energy down and negativity and their beliefs and everything else. So, oh, truly, truly. And then you generally, if you're in that higher vibration, um, you'll generally just attract other light minds in and other um, beings in who will assist you in, on the journey. Yeah, that's what I believe. There's a lot of fear because there's a lot of chaos the banking system and you know i mean it's probably all going to fall it could well there's a guy who's i think the first politician who's just been sent to jail for 18 months because he was uh, fiddling you know the expenses because you cannot build on bad foundations the foundations well they're steeped in, in ego and greed and yeah, um they definitely are. but that's born out of fear so if you build on bad foundations it's going to come crumbling down at some point and, and it will, and it, just to be okay with that. But, but Daniel, um, I actually have to go. I just really, really value what, we've, what you've done for me today and speaking with me. I really thank, want to thank you a lot. Well, thank you. It's great to speak to you too. I mean, I was going to ask you if I could have permission to use some of the quotes in my book if they, if they end up being appropriate. Would that be okay? Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great.